Well, hello, beautiful humans. Today is the day after I got my leg. It is sitting over by the Christmas tree like an insanely expensive Christmas present. We could never afford that without a second mortgage. Thank God for health insurance that helps to pay for it. I'm still really excited and overwhelmed. I've been keeping my leg elevated today because if it gets too uh, swollen, it won't fit. So I'm trying to keep it elevated so that by the time my husband gets home, I'll be able to practice walking around the house. It's definitely harder to try to use it with crutches than it is like with the bars they have at the prosthetics facility, but that's okay. I'm gonna learn to use it with crutches and then I'm gonna dish the crutches sooner than I know it. So since we've last talked, my accomplishments have doubled. Um, not only have I recovered my leg, but I've also shattered a glass tea kettle on the wrong side of the kitchen. So like, our kitchen is like a long hallway and there's a wall at this end and I was here and I shattered the tea kettle here. So like, I was stuck and the tea kettle was there. This is a terrible diagram. Long story short, I had to crawl up onto the counter to escape my mess. <laughs> that was a proud moment for me. I am getting ready to put on my leg for the first time at home. I am super excited to be able to do this and also a little bit nervous to do it without prosthetist supervision, but I'm sure I'll remember everything. Right, guys? Uh, first problem is that like the liner and this part gets covered in dog hair and cat hair because I live with so many animals. Um, we'll figure that out at a later point. Right now, we're just gonna get the leg on. But before we do that, I, I like position the camera so that you guys wouldn't see that I actually live in a sea of blankets but I actually live in a sea of blankets. So, I mean, I just basically threw these all off the couch and then there's more over by the fireplace. I mean, you guys should try it sometime. Sea of blanket living, I would definitely recommend. So much hair. I don't, just so much hair. It's very upsetting if you're weird like I am. This part still doesn't feel good. Ah. No, it'll get there though. Time for the leg. Now, something I had no idea about, this may not be interesting to you if you're not an amputee, or I guess you know this if you're an amputee, but this is governed by a vacuum pump. That's like how it stays on your leg along with everything else. And so you have to roll this down. Otherwise, it will like vacuum pump onto your leg and give your leg a crazy hickey, which just doesn't sound like a great time. <laughs> so then I'm pushing the back. This is like the vacuum pump button. It allows my leg to actually get in there, maybe. Real exciting, I know. Now here's something I found interesting. Like I said, this is governed by a vacuum pump. So if you see on my knee here, like there's not really an indentation. It takes like 30 or 40 like really good heavy steps before the vacuum action actually like works and the leg really sticks onto my leg. And because I can't put full pressure on, that can't really happen. However, there's a workaround and it's the fact that it's the foot motion that also like pumps the vacuum pump. So I can kind of trick it by moving the foot back and forth to get that vacuum pump working and get my leg suctioned onto my leg. That's a weird sentence. Okay guys, I've been practicing a little bit more walking and I just had my first moment of like, oh my God, this is why I did this. So I always used to do like CrossFit and was in the gym and all of that, but there are a lot of things that I could never do or never do right. And I would always modify them, but they would still hurt. And one of those things at like the most basic level was squatting. And so when I would squat before, because I had a fused ankle, it would not move. And so it would tweak my knee every time I would squat and my ankle would like have to move to the side. Well, not my ankle, my foot, because my ankle was fused. I didn't have an ankle anymore. And um, so it would always cause issues with my knee. It would always hurt. My form would always be off. It would cause issues in my hips and my neck and my back. That's gone now. Like how freaking awesome is that? I can squat, which is like a super easy, simple thing and it not cause issues the rest of my day. It's like the first moment of, oh my God, this is why I did this. So that I can live life a little more pain free. Now, right now things are a lot more painful because of the fall. It still really hurts. I'm probably gonna take it off in a few minutes even though I've only had it on for a few minutes, but I know that's gonna pass. And so check it out guys. I can like actually squat the right way. Though don't critique my form because this is my second day wearing my leg. So it doesn't look great yet. This is probably not thrilling from where you're sitting, but like the fact that I can do this and my knee isn't like all sideways, it's so freaking awesome. 
So we still have the leg on, but I've been reading through some of your comments on my latest video about walking for the first time, and I just, like I woke up to them this morning and they brought tears to my eyes. I honestly cannot um, express to you how much your support means to me. Like it honestly blows my mind. I can't believe that there are so many people like you guys out there who care about what I'm going through and are invested in this journey with me. And I can honestly say that you have helped me so much feel less alone through all of this and made it so much less weird to transition. And uh, going into this amputation was like the, definitely the most bizarre Thing I've ever done, most bizarre decision I've ever made, but being able to interact with you guys and read your messages to me and write back has just been incredible and has gotten me through so much of it where I might have gotten, you know, angry or bitter or just sunk and stayed there. You've helped me, like really, really, really helped me and your excitement with me as I was able to walk for the first time means the world to me. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Really, really thank you. Uh, I did manage to get upstairs to see my little rats here who I'm about to let up and out in a second. But before I did that, I did a very quick workout because I'm horribly out of shape, but that's okay because I have been busy recovering from amputation surgery. And uh, I just started journaling because that has been on my list of things to keep me mentally healthy during this time, like we talked about a few videos ago. And the writing prompt I've been working with today has to do with happiness. And I wanted to share it with you guys in hopes that maybe it would help you. My husband asked me the other day if I was happy and if I wasn't or if I was close to it or whatever, what would really make me happy? And my answer was, you know, I'm, I'm significantly happier than I was a couple years ago because I have done so much work on um, past traumas in my life and been able to work like through so much in my head. I'm not happy, happy, happy all the time. Obviously no one is, but I think it has to do more with a sense of contentedness. And I was thinking like if I pictured the moments in my life where I've lost myself, that's what I see happiness as. And those moments for me, I'll share a couple and I'll leave the rest for myself to write down personally and, and share with, you know, my husband. But those moments for me have been moments like um, sitting in a coffee shop when it's snowing outside, just talking to my husband for hours or with a best friend, or um, when I'm on the mats in jujitsu rolling. I find so much just joy in there and I, I lose track of time. It's like the moments I lose track of time or when I'm with horses or animals that I love. And so that's my writing prompt today. I'm writing down the moments I can remember in my life where I've just lost myself, lost track of time. And I think if I can incorporate more and more of those things in my life, the things that make me feel less panicked, less stressed, and more free, more like time doesn't matter. Um, and you know, definitely spending more time just with the things that matter. Like we hear about all the time, but I mean, so few of us actually do. I'm very guilty of that, but I'm definitely trying that uh, the world will be a better place. Right guys? So that's what I'm doing right now. I hope that maybe that can help your days and I look forward to talking to you soon. She's now gonna systematically take all of these one by one. Oh, oh maybe not. Oh no, there she goes for the next one. She's uh, arranging them around her cage in different corners. I mean, I think for the aesthetic, feng shui is important to rats too, guys.